previously on G. Brusco. It's, uh, it's on a pallet, um, looks fairly intact. Uh, I've taken the cages out and cleaned those individually. And of course with the name of Gwalia, which literally means whales. Okay, well I'm talking to you today um, on my phone as usual, mounted to the dash, but this time it's mounted via the quad lock, which is my my new kind of phone mount. Um, there's also a couple of new things I've added to Delilah over the last uh, couple of months, uh, both in terms of uh, what's on the roof and in terms of the technology I've got to record these videos. Um, like for instance, I've uh, purchased an Insta360 One X2, which is, um, as it might suggest, a 360 degrees uh, camera. Uh, we'll be trying these things out over the next couple of days. Uh, this is a trial run, so uh, on my way up to Bunbury, I had to bypass uh, Margaret River, Augusta, and Bustleton regions because uh, they were on fire. Um, We've just got two weeks left of uh, February before I head north, uh, so I'm going to go. To, um, now that I've got my rooftop tent uh, attached to the roof or whatever, um, and the fires are out, um, I'm going to go down to the region and uh, see what's left of it. Um, yeah, a little bit of an adventure uh, and test everything and make sure that uh, everything's working okay. Uh, there's a new kind of like little setup in the back as well, so these things will be ironed out over the next couple of days, uh, weeks, months, etc. But anyway, uh, feels good to be back on the road. It is bloody hot today. It's uh, it's about 40, uh, 40 degrees. Um, according to the dash, it's uh, 30 in here. So um, yeah, I got the aircon on. <laughs> it's very hot. It's humid as well today. Um, very humid. Uh, I started doing a few things earlier to finish packing the car and I was just dripping in sweat so I'd have another shower. As you can tell I've got the uh, CB radio back on, the aerial is up for the first time in quite a while. Uh, so yeah let's get into it and um, we're aiming first today to go down to kind of Dunsborough kind of area which is at the top of um, the Cape to Cape Walk uh, which we'll go into a little bit later on. Um, but uh, there's an interesting couple of things around there and it should only be a couple of hours drive so um, even though we're setting off at almost midday it's a bit later than I wanted but um, uh, well, let's see how it goes So we made it to uh, Cape Naturalist uh, Lighthouse. Uh, this is just the visitor center we're at at the moment. Uh, just to... So there's uh, the old cottages where the old lighthouse keepers used to stay. Uh, it's now a visitor center and a cafe. Uh, there's toilets on site as well. Uh, a bit of renovations going on. <laughs> and you can just make out the uh, lighthouse up that path. Excuse the uh, flies. It's very, very hot today. It's uh, around 38 at the moment. Uh, humidity is quite high as well. That's the uh, outdoor seating area. It's uh, quite windy. I'm trialing this new little whisperer thing that I've got for the Leviantite uh, microphone, so hopefully it does the job today. This will be the first real test of it, especially when we get up on the exposed areas. So, uh, yeah. Keep natural sliders. 
Alright, let's get a bit closer. I doubt you'll be able to make it out on the video, but there are hundreds of dragonflies. Just flying around, it's little ones. Just buzzing around these trees all the way up this walkway. Starting to get a bit of a better view of the lighthouse. So we're actually at the lighthouse. Built in 1903. It's not, uh, not the tallest lighthouse in the world, but uh, the land itself is quite elevated. So yeah, the sun's just directly above it. So not the best view from here. We'll go around the other side. Okay, there's the lighthouse from the other side. The sun is now at my back, so uh, it'll show a bit better. You can see the uh, the lens turning at the top there. Rather a big reflective lens. And then uh, this way you look out to sea. This is still the uh, the Indian Ocean at this point. Uh, the Cape Naturalist where we are now is, is to the north of what they call the Cape to Cape Walk, which goes from Cape Naturalist where we are now down to Cape uh, Lewin, I think it's called, which is down the south end. <laughs> Um, near uh, Augusta, where we'll go probably tomorrow. Yeah, so you can see the, the view out to sea is quite un uninterrupted here, so hence you don't need a very a lot of height for the lighthouse. It's a bit misty out uh, out to sea. You can't see, actually see that far. You can see a couple of silhouetted ships ships off in the distance. Uh, now it is quite windy, so I'm hoping that you uh, hear me. This little thing here is supposed to cancel out the wind, so we will find out. Uh, when I use these uh, similar ones on my um, Rode uh, Wireless Go, uh, that worked quite well on top of the mountain. Uh, but, you know, it takes a while to set up the, the camera, the tripods, etc. and then get the wire, Rode Wireless, so unless I'm doing a bit of piece to camera significant than what I am now. I'll be using my phone most of the time or my Insta360 when um, the, the hot shoe arrives for the for the mic on that. But uh, yeah, this this is the first major test. I'm, I'm trying to hold the mic uh, up here so you can see it. Uh, hopefully um, it is cancelling out the wind. It'll be down here normally so this is another quick little test to see whether or not a, you can hear me and cancelling out the wind. As he says that, the wind dies off completely. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of flies around, but apparently this isn't a bad fly day, according to the uh, tourist information center. Anyway, we've got a couple of pictures here, and uh, then we'll head uh, down the coast, um, following the coast to coast, Cape to Cape walk. But obviously, we're, we're not walking. <laughs> All right, last in house. I had the visitor Sunday here, let's get a couple of uh, interpretation boards about the Cape to Cape walk. I'll just take... So, just talking a little bit about the uh, the access <laughs> trails you can do. Uh, well, it walks around the lighthouse precincts where we are right now. And this is uh, the Cape Naturalist to wide up uh, stretch of the Cape to Cape. So, they haven't actually got a, an entire map of the Cape to Cape for me to show you. But there is one on this uh, conservation interpretation board. So this little kind of peninsula uh, juts out from the southwest of uh, WA. Uh, Cape Naturalist, uh, right up the top there, is where we are right now. And Cape Lewin is in the shade. Uh, Cape Lewin, just south of Augusta, is down the bottom. So uh, we, we're going to just go down to uh, Yanning up today, and uh, just south of that, there's a natural spring. And tomorrow, we're going to go down to Margo River and Hamlin Bay uh, in Augusta before going back up to Bustleton. So, that's the Cape to Cape when they talk about the Cape to Cape walk. There's a marine sanctuary zone all the way around, which is good. And the flies. Uh, like crawling up my nose and everything, so I'm gonna get back in the car now and uh, scoot on. So 
just down the coast a little bit from uh, the lighthouse, which uh, you might be able to make out on the headland over there. Uh, this is uh, Sugarloaf Rock, um, or will be yeah, when I get up this <laughs> hill. Uh, but rather lovely little bay here. Not so much of a beach on this side. But uh, as we go up and over here, I imagine there'll be a cove on the other side. A little bit here more about the uh, marine park. And, uh, yeah, let's have a look over, see what's on this look at. Better view of the rocks here. Yeah. Uh, you can just about see the uh, the lighthouse sneaking its head over the hill there. That's where we just come from. G'day, I'm uh, Fred the Flagman, and I've designed this, uh, the Southern Cross and Boomerang, to be the flag of Australia. Uh, we're keeping the tradition of the Southern Cross, the Eureka flag, we've brought it over here to the position of power, and then we've got an indigenous element, the boomerang, and the national colors, the green and gold. And one extra special thing about our beautiful flag is that when we hang it this way, inside, we see the sky, the sea, the beach, and the bush. So three Aussie iconic elements and the environment in that design. And where, where can they follow you, Fred? Uh, Fred hashtag Fred the Flagman. Uh, on the Facebook, it's F-L-A-G-O-Z. And uh, I haven't gotten onto the, the next one yet. Radio. All right, thanks All right. for that. Yeah, yeah, this is the wildly popular, dare I say, wildly popular. Yeah, so look out for the flag. You'll find stickers on random cars across Western Australia. This is uh, Yalling Up, which is further down the south, <coughs> further south than uh, where we were earlier. I'm going to look at the uh, statue. Quite reminiscent of a few I've seen in the UK of uh, people following the out to see. This one clearly is an uh, Aboriginal lady. Uh, looks like washing her hair, maybe. So this will also be a nice spot for sunset pictures. Good morning. We're in um, Yallingup. Um, uh, we're in Yallingup Caves uh, Caravan Park, uh, where we stayed last night. Um, first night in the rooftop tent. Um, considering it was 40 degrees all day yesterday, very humid. Um, it cooled down uh, quite a bit, and it was quite uh, nice and cool in the tent upstairs. <laughs> Uh, nice bit of airflow going through. Um, the next campsite, hopefully, I'll be able to do like a, a proper walkthrough for you to show you uh, what the rooftop tent is like. Uh, overnight, um, where I'm actually sighted, um, there's a lot of trees around, so we're in the shade, so I couldn't get the solar panels out. So the um, the 500p uh, lithium power station is completely dead. Um, the sun's just peaked above the uh, the tree line, so I've I've had the power. Uh, the solar blanket on for the last um, hour it's up to 15 percent i'm gonna have to try and get the solar panels out um, when i stop somewhere today before the campsite it's on the alternator but um, the fridge isn't full at the moment so it's it's pulling a lot more power than it normally would 
Um, point to note there, I guess I should have done adequate uh, prep before I left uh, in terms of um, making sure that the fridge freezer was full um, and everything in it was chilled. Uh, oh, well, we live and we learn. Anyway, uh, we're going to just follow the coast uh, down south today. Uh, there's a couple of sites uh, to see. Um, probably aiming to end up in Augusta today. We'll skirt, skirt through Marga River. Uh, probably not giving it as much time as uh, is warranted because it's a, it's a fabulous region, but um, this is just a couple of days uh, excursion. <laughs> Basically it's called the Canal Rocks because there's a small passage between the two sets of rocks that looks like a canal. And it's a very, very nice uh, rock formation. Uh, excuse the pun there, that's a geologist joke. As the rocks are nice. It's nice and uh, limestone formations. Really I wouldn't have thrown up today, but as you can probably tell from my hand, it is very windy. And, um, See, this is one of the uh, canals that goes through, the bridge kind of goes over. Uh, much more impressive in the distance there, when the waves come crashing over. Small channel where the sea rushes through. There it comes. Might try and get a decent photograph of this. By the way, I found out yesterday on reviewing the footage with this uh, muffler thing that uh, you can still hear the wind blaring, so uh, I'm trying to shelter it uh, today. You can still hear my voice, mind, which was a bonus, but uh, obviously it's not uh, it's not the perfect uh, noise cancellation device. I could uh, sit and watch this all day, to be honest. Never fail to be uh, amazed by the majesty of the ocean. probably spending a bit too much time here but I've climbed up onto the rocks and uh, you can see that little gap uh, just over my right shoulder that's where I was uh, that's where I was taking photos of that so just to give you a clear view I'm up on the hills here uh, car park's just down there behind those rocks and uh, this is the canal that runs through the canal rocks We've also got this little uh, bottleneck here, which is causing the, uh, the waves to come crashing through quite spectacularly. Okay, not right now, but <laughs> they have been. Uh, so yeah, beautiful little spots. These are the canal rocks. One of the key things about uh, traveling down this neck of the woods is uh, there's a one main central road which kind of hugs the coastline all the way down, which is known as Caves Road. Uh, it's, you can probably guess why it's known as Caves Road. There are a series of caves along it and uh, it runs basically all the way from Dunsborough all the way down to Augusta. Uh, 
I especially remember the driving on this road back in 2002, uh, going from vineyard to vineyard and uh, brewery Salado to Salado. Uh, but yeah, Caves Road. Um, I, I've done all the caves along this road, um, and I haven't got a, a massive appetite into them all again. But um, uh, if I come across uh, one of the big ones, I will take you in there to show you uh, just briefly. But. Uh, if you've got time to spare, I would highly recommend coming down this neck of the woods uh, for like a couple of weeks just to explore because it is cram-packed with stuff to do, uh, not just uh, vineyards and uh, breweries, uh, but beautiful beaches, rock formations, uh, caves, um, and those of other little uh, things to do as well, which I'm sure I haven't come across yet. So anyway, uh, we're just going down the road a little bit, probably have a bit of lunch in uh, Marga River uh, before ultimately uh, ending up in Hamlin Bay or Augusta tonight. All right. Okay, so we're just in uh, the township of Marga River. Just had lunch, uh, a paleo lunch, in a beautiful cafe called Drift, which was recommended on Google. Uh, so we're just going to drive through the town now and uh, work our way slowly down to uh, the mouth of the river, Marga River, with the sea. Um, I've never been there before, so I'm going to try and find that. So, yeah, but there we was. Just have a little drive through town. Uh, may end up using this um, video and audio, or may not. Either way. Is the little township of Marga River. It's very, very quaint. It's full of uh, one-way systems and uh, whatnot. It reminds me a little bit of um, Betis Akoid in North Wales uh, because um, of the outdoor shops and the little quaint little restaurants and things. Very much kind of similar feel, only you know here it's an extra 20 degrees in heat. <laughs> All right, so actually I thought we were going to go through the township, but it uh, looks like we just skirted around it. School to the left, um, <clears throat> and now we should end up going down these back roads until we follow the river out to the ocean. So this is uh, Marga River, or the beach in Marga River. The, the river mouth is just the other side of uh, this beach that I'm on, which I'll show you later. But, uh, just wanted to quickly show you uh, this beach here. It's quite popular with surfers, as you can see why there's very large waves breaking. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, this is where they had the Surfing Masters Championships last week. So uh, the world's best surfers. Uh, well, the ones that could get into Australia at least <laughs> uh, came down to surf in this so mostly Australians and New Zealanders I'd imagine but yeah a beautiful little beach uh, the, the sand is very very soft here the water is is see-through you know it's absolutely beautiful uh, there's a lot of reefs and stuff out to sea which causes uh, the waves obviously uh, I'm going to go back up onto this uh, walkway up here because you get much better views up there. about the surfing history here. Yeah.
where the main brakes are. Noongar calendar, that's the, uh, the traditional owners. I've seen these uh, quite a bit across Western Australia. This is the, uh, the mouth of the river Margaret, Margaret River. Uh, it only flows out to sea at certain times a year. At the moment you can see there's a sandbar in the way, which causes uh, the river to back up. Uh, there's a sign uh, just over there asking people not to dig out the channel, because uh, it, it basically empties the river very quickly and uh, kills off some species that are in there. Uh, there's sand dunes around. Uh, this this is actually Man Beach, so there's a life uh, lifesavers there. Uh, there's only one person in the water I can see at the moment. Uh, the swell is quite large, so yeah, I imagine there's a strong rip currents there. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's uh, Margaret River. Probably about, uh, I'd say about six meters high. And there's a person's head there, like. <laughs> Next week on Jeep Roscoe. So you can see around here, there's a lot of fire damage. So it turns out that the lighthouse is under restoration.